All right, guys. So in this video, we are going to uh, take one more example uh, on uh, on monads, and um, the example that I'm going to that I'm going to use in this uh, in this video, um, this 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 example has been inspired in some sense uh, from this from this paper that I've put up over here, which is monads for functional programming by uh, Philip uh, Philip Wadler. I think this is what this is a really really wonderful paper, and it introduces the the idea and the notion behind monads very very clearly. And uh, if you're interested in these uh, ideas and on this topic of functional programming, I would highly recommend uh, uh, um, getting getting this paper and um, and uh, and uh, reading it. So um, so. What we're going to do now is uh, let's uh, let's 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 do this. Um, let me let me start off by saying that uh, let's say I've got a I've got a type. I'm just going to create a new type here, and um, let's call this type term. Okay, so I'm going to create a new new type which is called which is called term, which is actually an algebraic algebraic data type. And um, you know this could be having uh, in this case that there are two ways of creating values that belong to this type. So let's say the first value. The first value constructor, the first value constructor could be could be um, let's say the value constructor is con, and uh, it takes in a value of type let's say an integer, integer, or there could be another value constructor which is basically the diff term, the the the, the diff value constructor which takes in two values, two values of type. Term and type term. All right. Okay. So given this, given this thing, um, uh, think of think of the think of the div as basically um, something that just holds the quotient. It just holds the quotient of taking the first term and dividing by second term, and uh, that's the that's the that's the value constructor. So uh, so this is this is the type term in this case is my type. The con is my first value constructor that I can use to create some some value belonging to that type term, and then I have a second value constructor which is my div that I can also use to create values of my of my term. All right. So now, given this, given this, uh, I'm going to just create a very very simple evaluator, and uh, all this evaluator does is basically so. Let's say I have an evaluator. Let's call this evaluator eval. And has a certain certain type, and the type to this method is that it takes in as a parameter a some 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 value of type term, and it gives you back it gives you back as an as an as an answer something that is an integer. All right. So how this how how would this uh, how would this play out? So if I were to go into the value world, if I were to make a transition from this type world, which I'm currently at, this is this is a type world. So and if I make a transition to the value world. And let's use green for my value world. I could say that uh, eval, the the function eval, just by using pattern matching, I can say that um, eval over here. Let's say if it takes in something of type of type a con and an a, and uh, if that's the term, if this this entire thing over here is this is this is this term there, this entire thing right there is a term, then the answer to this needs to be just an integer. And the integer part of that is right there. So I'm just going to return back in this case, just return back A. All right. So uh, so this is the first the first of uh, using pattern matching. I can uh, say this is what eval would be. Alternatively, eval could be also be equal to just by pattern matching. It could also be something a diff of a term and a term. So it takes in a term. It takes in the first value term, some value of term. And that value is basically this piece right there, diff of a term and a term. So diff of a term and a term. This is going to be equal to. This is going to be equal to. In this case, I'm just going to say, this is going to be equal to. I'm just first going to do an eval, eval on the first type, on the first parameter t. This entire thing is going to return back to me. This is going to return back to me an integer, because the type signature tells me that this is going to be this entire thing over here is an integer. With that integer, let's say I do a division. I do a division with uh, eval, eval of the second type. So this is t1, and this is t2. This is t1, and then I do eval on t2. All right. So 
plus an integer, this is an integer, and integer divided by integer gives you another quotient, in this case, an uh, integer type as well. And uh, this could be this could be one way of having a really, really simple evaluator that is written using this type, type uh, declaration over here. Okay, now the question here is, what if this could also have errors, right? Let's say, for example, if I'm trying to divide something by a zero, this might result into some kind of an error. And um, right now, my my type, my type over here, has no way of indicating that something could actually go wrong with this. All it says is it takes a term and gives it back something that is an integer. That's all it tells you. But I would like to make this make this type a little bit, in some sense, sophisticated in the sense that look. I could return back an integer, but there's something that could go wrong as well, in which case I cannot return back an integer, in which case I'm just going to give back some kind of an error. So how do I change my type signature here? How do I change my type signature here so that it can take into account those those errors? So one thing I could do here is um, one thing I could do here is uh, let's 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 modify let's modify our eval type. So um, I could say, all right, uh, let's have a eval. Now, which still takes in a term, it still takes in a term as an as an as an input, but now it returns back to you something that could be an integer. It may or may not be an integer. So I'm just going to use type maybe the type constructor maybe. I'm going to say this returns back to you a maybe, maybe an integer. Okay. Now, of course, maybe is a type constructor in Haskell. This is a type constructor in Haskell. And uh, again, uh, just to uh, quickly put this thing down here, it's the, the actual type is defined as uh, data maybe maybe of some some type x equals to just of x of nothing. All right, so these are my value constructors. My value constructors over here are just, and uh, that's my another value. And this is an algebraic, algebraic data type here, and this maybe over here is basically my type constructor. All right, so how do I, how do I, how do I use this here? Now my method, my method eval could could uh, would basically look like, so if I were to go into the type world, um, it would look like uh, eval of con of a in which case I'm just going to return back. Remember, I'm not returning back an integer anymore. My signature tells me, my, my new signature tells me it's going to be some value, it's going to be some value of type maybe an integer. So what, what values, what values belong to the type of maybe of integer? Well, one of them is just, just x there. So I'm going to say this, this entire thing, this entire thing equals to, equals to just, just, just a. All right. So this could be this could be one simple. Uh, I'm using pattern matching to take into account to take into account the possibility that uh, at this point I'm going to return back something that could that could be an integer. All right. So with this, how would I perform pattern matching on something that is uh, not using the value constructor con of a, but actually a diff of term and term? So if I do this again, if I say eval on div div of uh, t1 and t2 then this gets a little bit interesting in the sense that um, first thing let's 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 perform let's perform an eval let's perform an eval on t1 what will this return back to you eval of t1 is going to return back to you maybe an integer right it could be an integer but it could also be nothing when do you think nothing will get returned nothing will get returned when you have an error right and uh, if it's not an error i'm just going to return back I'm just going to return back just of x. Okay, so think of this, think of a nothing piece just symbolizing that something has gone wrong, an error has happened, most specifically the error in this case being something which is division by zero. If it's not a division by zero, everything's fine. I'm just going to use this uh, first part over here, the, the just value constructor. So let's, let's perform an eval on t1, but this could be an integer. It may not be an integer, so I need to perform a pattern matching on, on, the, on the output of eval of t1. So I could just just do some, let's say, let's just compare using the case statement here. So if this, if eval of t1, if this happens to be, if this happens to be nothing, okay, if this results into a nothing, then in which case, in which case, do not proceed any, any, any more forward, just return back, just, just basically the output of this method is going to be 
nothing as well. The output of this entire thing, of this entire thing is going to be, is going to be nothing. If the eval on P1 is nothing. Okay, what if it is, what if it is not nothing, meaning you get back something which is just of some value x. Instead of saying x here, let's just maybe call it n, n being for a numerator. Okay, if this is the case, then this is fine, but I need to proceed a little bit forward, a little bit deeper, and in which case I need to again perform the same set of operations again, but on, on T2. So I'm going to say, in which case, do again an eval, do an eval on T2, and uh, check the values that you get back. So if, if this results back in a nothing, then return back, return back nothing. So again, if the entire output of this thing, of this entire eval of diff of T1, T2 is going to result in nothing if the eval on T2 results in nothing. Okay, what if, it's, what if it is not nothing, meaning it is just is using this this part of the value constructor as some value that is just of d. Well, if it's just of d, which case now now I can do now I can uh, uh, do a little bit more. Uh, I need to have one another sanity check before performing the division. So I'm going to just say at this point, if my d my denominator if it is actually equal equal to zero, <coughs> if it's actually equal equal to zero which means that I cannot perform a division anymore. So I'm just going to, at this point, I'm just going to say at this point, uh, not, I understand it may not be really, really true to the to the pipe, uh, to the Haskell syntax here. So, but again, the purpose I, for these first few, first few set of videos is just to give you an intuition before, before, before jumping and writing actual code in Haskell here. So at this point, I'm just going to say, then just basically, just, just, just written back nothing. So it's just going to be, it's just going to be nothing at this point okay as as I'm in a position now to actually perform perform the division so I'm just going to return back at this point just of just of the n divided by n divided by t okay so this is this is how my how my implementation of eval would look like the moment I start to incorporate the the error the error term so look at look at look at what has happened here this is this is what my evaluation looked like previously without taking into consideration anything um, uh, any any error related scenarios. The moment I introduce things that could potentially go wrong, which is a division by zero, then I have I have some interesting pieces happening over here and some interesting pieces is first time basically checking before whether if something something has gone wrong on the first term, T1, and if something has gone wrong, then the entire expression, the entire output of this entire expression, meaning this entire thing, this entire thing results back into a nothing. Okay, it just stops there. It, I don't even proceed with anything, anything after that. Likewise, I perform the same set of operations again on T2. I perform the same set of operations again on T2 by performing an evaluation on T2. And again, if uh, if the if the return, if the value of develop t2 is uh, is a nothing then the entire the entire return value of this entire expression again is basically nothing it's just going to return back into a nothing otherwise i just perform a last sanity check here where the, the, the denominator is actually not equal to zero if it's not equal to zero in which case i can proceed with my division and uh, and return back a value which is again of type maybe of integer all right so so this piece over here this piece over here, this piece over here, and this piece over here. You can see that all of these, all of these, all of these, all of these values that are being that are being returned here, they're all a part of the type maybe, maybe an integer. Alright? And uh, so so how can how can how can Monads, monads help me here. I mean, uh, uh, if you again, again, one other way to look at this, look at this kind of this mess over here that I've created with this, uh, with this, with this uh, implementation here is that in some sense I'm mixing, I'm mixing the state, I'm mixing the context, which is the, which is the error-related part and the non-error-related part together. 
both of them have been kind of mixed in my implementation so that um, and uh, the mixing of this error related part which is most more clearly in case of monads is the is the is the contextual part uh, the or in some case the uh, the the impurity part and the actual returned value both have been mixed together which has created in this kind of a nested level nested level complexity and um, and this definitely is is really, really difficult to even even understand uh, what is this code doing in the first place without and in some sense, it's even taken an imperative style programming programming approach here. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to take this. We're going to keep the functionality as it is, but we're going to introduce introduce monads, and we're going to look at monads and how monads can actually help us uh, in solving and so in fact, introducing a little bit more clarity, a little bit more clarity in taking this sub uh, problem and uh, and reformulating it in a much much more uh, a clear a clear fashion.